Tag 5. Oh boy. So, wo gehen wir heute hin? Zum Clubhaus. Hä, hey, wenn wir refusen? Macht das plus Juliana? The fuck, dude? Okay. Hm. I always took good care of my health and even better care at the times when something does start to hurt badly. Das kennen wir doch schon. So my feet will... Ja, er kennt das schon. Hm. Hm. I heard screams coming from it. I tried to listen closely but I couldn't figure out anything. <lacht> Give it back! Oh, she's... Jetzt, jetzt, jetzt reicht's. Jetzt reicht's. Was, 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 hier, was ist hier los? Hä? So. Ja. Verpiss dich. So. Give it back! <lacht> no, I won't. Rihanna was running around the room with a coil of wire in her hands, chased by Churik. Guys, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but... Give it back! They didn't even give me a bit of uh, attention. Now I won't! She completely caught up in chase, slipped past me, almost knocking me down. Hey! Oyana was running in circles around the room, laughing cheerfully. I wonder what she needs this wire for. Meanwhile, the head of Cybernetics Club was looking fine even after yesterday's madness. One could even say he was looking fresh. But this probably wouldn't help him to catch Loyana. She was smaller, more agile, agile, more, more, more agile and schneller. She couldn't easily drive him to exhaustion. Hey! <laughs> Oriana wrapped up to me and hid uh, and hit behind my back. Shrek and his son left the club, slamming the door on his way out. He was offended, it seems. Hey, what's wrong with you? You won't catch me. <laughs> Come on, zurück, du scheiß Fotze. <laughs> she looked at the electronic, who was silently observing all the silly running, and stuck out of her tongue at him. Samian, take the wire away from her. And why do you need it in the first place? You don't have enough wire or something? He was trying to catch Juliana, who was hiding behind me. He moved to the right while she moved to the left. He moved to the left, then she moved to the right. In the end, I got tired of this and grabbed the wire from Oliana with a dexterous move. Give it to me! Give it back! She shouted really resentfully. No, I won't! Stop pausing around! <laughs> I held the wire above my head, Oliana with a height couldn't possibly get it. Thank you! Okay, fine! She snorted and turned away from me. Why do you need it in the first place? That's none of your business! Oliana looked at me slyly. <laughs> Do you want me to tell every? Do you want me to tell everybody that you? What? I shut her mouth with my hand and tracked her along with to the exit. Okay, we need to go. I told Electronic while giggling stupidly. And what did you come for? Once outside, I let the kicking Oliana free. Hear me out. You realized that it was an accident. Even more so, it was caused by you. I know nothing. Facts are facts. You are watching us. Ah, What would Olga think? On the one hand, I did not want to care in the slightest what the camp leader would say, but on the, on the other, everything was against me, and... Uh, and my position, it would be better to not get myself into such a situation. Fine, maybe we should make a deal somehow. Maybe we could make a deal somehow. Hmm... She started to think. I know. I anticipated the worst. You bring me that wire. But what do you need it for? I need it for my needs. Okay, let's assume I get it. You won't tell anybody. I give you the word of a pioneer. I could hardly believe her. But on the other hand, it was just a coil of wire, so why shouldn't I try? 
Und warum soll ich das jetzt re refusen? Warum gibt Refuse hier ein Plus? Das, das, das ist das, was ich gerade nicht verstehe. Fuck. No. No wire for you. Enough already. Then I'll tell everything. You'll tell everything anyway. Or Alyssa will. Ah, get lost. Yeah, sure. As if it's my fault. It is. You were watching us. No, I wasn't. But no matter how you slice it, I actually was. Alyssa doesn't think so. She doesn't agree with me about a lot of things. And Olga won't be happy either. You know what? I started to lose my temper. If you want to tell everything, go ahead right now and don't forget to mention that the government's default was... <laughs> that the government's default, world depression, global warming and the Genesis flood are all my fault too. Oh, come on, stop overacting like that. I was choking. Choking? I suddenly realized that I really was wound up too much. Your jokes are stupid and, and what am I supposed to do every time? Guess if it is uh, for, for real or for... was? Guess if it is for real or a joke. Yep. She grinned. It was more funny that way. Rihanna turned around and ran towards the square, waving her hand in parting. Still, you can't deal with her in a harmonious way. I sighed and went back into the club's quarters. Can I hear skip? Electronic was building something with rapt attention. Now I'm done with everything, so I thought you could get me something as you promised. That was sounded a bit was sycophantic, which was enough to drive me drive me mad. Of course, I'm not insisting, but one minute. He tore himself away from his walk and got a pair of buns from the drawer and a classic triangular pack of kefir. Be my guest. Thank you. While I was busy, uh, yeah, busy eating, Electronic didn't turn away from this device for a second. He was rolling up the wire which had uh, taken away from Olyan onto the coil. So, what's this? An inductor. An inductor? Join our club and you'll know everything. He looked at me and smiled slyly. I'll think about it. Of course I wasn't going to join anything, but taking it into account that he had me that he had fed me, I had to be polite. By the way, as I said, I have something else. Well, yeah. Wait a second. He went into a check-in room and came back after a minute with some kind of package. This can we also skip him? He gave it to me. Hmm. There was a big bottle of Stolnitschnaya vodka inside. Ah, I get it, but it's still morning. Oh, does Electronic share the motto of get drunk in the morning, take the entire day off? <laughs> well, what are you talking about? I'm not suggesting we drink it. We, we have it to clean the optics. Cleaning the optics. Yeah, right. Internally. Okay. I gave him the package back. I'll go then. Come back any time. Of course. The moment I want to have a drink. <laughs> Walking out, at the, I questioned myself why he wanted to show me the vodka in the first place. Suddenly my hunger returned again. For sure a meal of some buns and kefir was awesome, but it's not enough to fill me up. Luckily for me I heard a bell sound calling pioneers for lunch. Can I skip him? Yeah. Gehen mit Lena. Einfach nur damit ich skippen kann. Okay. Wohin denn nun? Komme ich irgendwo hier hin? Viola, give a beer. Hm. Okay.
wo denn jetzt? Äh, Library. Oh, wir könnten gucken, welches Buch Alissa gelesen hat. Das können wir machen, ja. My curiosity won. I struck at the right moment when Alyssa was looking away from me and snatched the book. <laughs> Ow! She screamed. In the following second, her face took in such an expression that, that it made me question my decision. <laughs> If I'm about to die, at least I will know what for. I held a copy of Gone with the Wind in my hands. It was the same book that Lena was reading that evening on a bench. I was so astonished that I completely forgot about my imminent death. Is it interesting? Yeah. Oh, ich dachte, die liest da irgendwie so ein... Ne, so ein... How to fuck with a pioneer or sowas. And it's answered without any enthusiasm and blushing. Okay then. I handed the book back to her. As I threw it on the table and left the library quickly looking at me. So, human things aren't alien to her. In the end, she is, she too is a girl. After a quick review of everything that just happened, I concluded that there was actually nothing that strange. Finally, Senya's deep groan ring out, reaching everybody in the library. Good. Well, <laughs> Hilfe! Just say seated. All I was doing was just watching the fire. There's a saying that claims that one could watch it forever, as well as running water. But there was also some third thingy there. What was that? One could watch three things forever burning fire, running water, and how other people work. The chemical pulled me out of my daydreaming. Samian. Don't you think that it's too early, to, too early to relax? But what else would I need to do? I honestly couldn't get what Olga Walton wanted from me. I don't know. She stopped for a moment. But if there is something to be done, then do it without hesitation. She smiled am ambitiously and went, and went back to the fire to throw a few branches on. After those words, I am completely sure that she treats me like a personal slave. <laughs> Or at least like I'm a free labor force, which is, strictly speaking, the same thing. I sighed and put my head down on my hands. Or, or, or my hands. <laughs> Hoping my torment will be over for today. Someone patted me on the shoulder. I look up and saw Shuriken and Electronic who sat next to me. What do you want? I asked tiredly. Don't be sad. Is there anything better to do? Look, we've been discussing the possibilities for, for the advancement of the cybernetic stuff with Olga. And there's a problem, we need more guys. If you could... He hesitated. Advancement, and those guys are incompatible with each other. I said nothing and started to look over the pioneers around me instead. Well, I don't have time. Can't you see that I'm always busy with the camp leaders around? Yeah, I guess you're right. It's kind of embarrassing how it all went today with Oljana. I looked at him with surprise. It seems that Shuri blames himself for that cake accident. Yeah, it is. All the pioneer seems to be here, but I couldn't spot Slava anywhere. I think she's angry with me. Who? <laughs> oh. I think she's angry with me. Who? I was absently. Oh, Jana. Maybe I should apologize? No, it's not your fault. We seat silently for a while and then I stood up and said, 
my Alexa nump. I better take a walk. They made no reply. I made a few circles around our improvised camp, noticing the, the close looks of the camp leader following me. Looks like Olga couldn't wait to come up with some kind of new task for me. I haven't found Slava anywhere. Maybe I should go and try to find her. On the other hand, I felt sorry for Jana every time I recalled her upset face. Maybe this hike isn't the most entertaining thing ever, but sitting there all alone isn't any better either. But at the same time, I didn't want to go anywhere. Gut, wir können versuchen, Slavia zu finden. Wir könnten natürlich zu Jana gehen, was natürlich die Jana route weiter voranbringt. Oder wenn wir einfach sitzen bleiben, haben wir die Samian route ja. Wobei ich keine Ahnung habe, was die Samuel Route ist, aber ich glaube, die ist auch noch ein bisschen Mindfuck. Ah, so. Go to Ulyana. I didn't think about Ulyana that evening at all. That thing with the cake. Like it didn't even happen. Though I remembered very well her resentful, disappointed face. Maybe in some other situation I would never have decided to go to her. But now a fine reason to leave this place and end up this stupid hike has appeared. So, recalling that Olga told me to be prepared for new tasks, I decided not to ask for permission. And after choosing a proper moment, I disappeared in the woods. Night fell on the camp. I mentally thanked the camp leader for not researching the land too well since this meant civilization was only a few hundred meters away. Another long walk through the night forest was not on, in my plans. Soon I came to the square and hesitated. Won't it look silly? What will I tell Yana? Moreover, why will I get to see her in the first place? My head was so heavy and full that there was no room in it for the, de for the development of any ideas. If I would compare my brain at its prime to a highway full of speeding thoughts overtaking each other and causing giant chaotic crashes, then now it's nothing but a forgotten tiny path in this desolate forest. Yeah, which is only used in times of absolute necess necessity. So it's better not to think about anything and just act. But where shall I go? Maybe to a cabin? And what if she's not there? Ah! All of a sudden, something knocked me down and I fell to the asphalt. It's a good thing that I had time to stretch out my arms, otherwise I would have broken my nose. Gotcha! I quickly got up from the ground and saw Oliana standing before me. What are you doing? I couldn't stop myself from shouting despite my best efforts. You shouldn't be stargazing. I answered. She answered very viciously. What if I had, uh, what if I had smashed my nose or I had broken my arm? I said more calmly. Well, night of just happened. Look, why do you always mock me? I already regret my, deci my decision to try and ease her loneliness. Was today's punishment not enough for you? Can you even draw simple conclusions? It's entirely your fault. The smile suddenly disappeared from Oliana's face. <clears throat> What exactly is my fault? Everything. You mean I am to blame all the time? Yes. She crossed her arms in front of her chest and turned away. Great. I suddenly wanted to get away from this place as fast as possible. But it was because of you I came here. What? I guess you are quite bored given that everybody is hiking and you are alone here. I don't care. She yelled cheerfully. Well, if things are that way, what do you want to do? What do you mean? Well, if you gave it because of me... Such a thought had no occurred to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Although I don't really know what I came here for. After such a greeting, I no longer want to do anything. Then it's up to me to choose. Said Oliana cheerfully and started to think. I stared at her for some time, but then couldn't stand it. Listen, if you are again planning to... I know. Let's get the others. We'll dress up as ghosts, for example. It's going to be so fun. I didn't find this fun in, in any way. Enough of that already. I began tiredly but broke off. Maybe that's not such a bad idea. 
After all, by the time she thinks it's over and gathers all she needs, Olga and the pioneers will already be back. If I came here because of Oliana, then I need to play along. Perhaps you're right. What? She was looking at me with her eyes wide open. Are you going to agree just like that? Well, what's wrong about that? And furthermore, if you insist? She studied me at attentively for several seconds and then rattled off. Excellent! Then we need some bed sheets. We want to look like real ghosts, don't we? Probably. You go get them! Oyan announced imp imp imperiously. Where do you think am I going to get them? Take them from your cabin, obviously. It wasn't that obvious to me. So, you don't want to? She instantly made a gloomy face. Okay, okay. I recall the fact that there was so there were spare sets of bed li linen, bed linen in Olga's wardrobe. So maybe there was nothing to worry about. We approached the camp leader's cabin, and I said to Oliana, "Wait for me here, sir." Yes, sir. She rattled off and saluted me. It seems Oliana was entirely immersed in the game. I quickly found two clean white bed sheets. It's a shame they are going to get smacked. <laughs> Here, take it. I handed one of the bed sheets to her. It's too large for me, Oyana said after trialing it in her hands. No wonder, considering her high. Give it to me. I folded the bed sheets in half and gave it back to her. It's much better now. Follow me. She put the white cloth over her head and ran into the forest. Wait! I threw myself after her. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. And we can kind of den or dem. Just a few minutes later we were near the pioneers campfire hiding behind the trees. Now it was clear that, that the trick harmless at first was taking an unpleasant twist. For some reason I was sure uh, from the start that the hike would end before Yana took any actions. And now we were standing 10 meters away from the pioneers, dressed in bed sheets. We didn't look frightened at all, rather we looked com comical. Get ready on my command! Wait, wait. Actually, I was choking when we agreed to all this. Think again, I don't do any good. You will get yourself put under house arrest and until the end of the shift. And so will I. No retreat, no surrender. Are you ready? On the count of three. I started scro scrolling through all the possibilities outcomes in my head feverishly. Fe there weren't many of them. First one, me and Oliana ran out from <coughs> me and Oliana ran out from behind the trees and start the pioneers laughing, resulting in me getting us considerable scolding from the camp leader and possibly something even worse. And Oliana is sentenced to the highest measure of punishment feasible under the laws of the pioneer camp. The second one I stay here and observe with the others how Oliana runs around the plate in a bed sheet. <laughs> she is sentenced to the highest measure like in the first option and I stay in relative safety. Third one, I do everything possible to prevent her from committing this act and more vandalism and no one suffers but her self esteem. The fuck, dude? <laughs> oh man. It all could have gone so well, but either those thoughts took more than three seconds or Liana shortened the count, so I hadn't managed to pull myself together in, in time when she sprang out in the clay, screaming inhumanly. <laughs> As expected, all the pioneers laughed loudly. Someone even fell from the log he, he was sitting on and started rolling on the ground. I tried to save the day and yelled as loud as possible so Yana would hear me, but not the others. Fool! Stop it! Come here! The fuck was this? <laughs> I don't know whether it was my persuasion that worked or Yana understood that her performance held had failed, but she ran in my direction quickly and without pausing hid herself in the forest. I didn't hesitate but follow her. Such a finale left a tiny chance that she won't be punished again. It's good that I didn't join in in on that tragic comical. 
Now I need to find Liana. It turned out to be not that hard, as she hadn't managed to get far. Warum heult sie denn jetzt? Liana was sitting on a tree stump. Can't stump the trump, can't stump the trump. Crying. I stood still, hesitating. Of course, that, uh, such an outcome was to be expected, but now I had absolutely no idea what to do or how to comfort her. And besides, I would go. I would go back to the camp intentionally, and I had a, and I had agreed to participate in that show. But it just got worse. As well as that, I was tired, tired under death. At that moment, I wished it would all just cease to exist. I just wanted to close my eyes and appear somewhere else, preferably in a quiet and peaceful place. But the sight of sobbing Oyana obliged me to take action. I walked up to her and sat down on the ground. Well, what were you expecting anyway? I began philosophically. It was sure to end up this way. You're to blame for everything. You! Oyana shouted in tears. So, what would have changed if I had sprung out of with you back there? We both would have been loved at all. La laughed it. That's all. You always act this way. Always. Her sobbing was becoming louder and louder. And then she suddenly rushed at me and started pounding on my chest with her fists. The hits were not hard. <laughs> it was more like... It was more likely an attempt to take out the despair that had gripped Oleana than, uh, than a real wish to beat me up. Calm down already. I said firmly. She stopped crying for a second and hugged me. Maybe nothing would have changed, but it would have been more comfortable for me if we went together. I didn't know what to say, so I just patted on her, her on, her, on the head. <laughs> oh, ich kann nicht mehr. Das war Strecken. Can I stay like this for a bit longer? Yes. <laughs> At that time, she didn't seem like a dangerous explosive nuclear reactor in the form of a little girl, but just like a little sister of mine who would mess things up. I wasn't mad at her at all. On the contrary, it seemed I too was beginning to care about the failure of the ghost play acting. It's alright, it's alright. We will scare them probably next time. Yeah. Ich dachte gerade, what the fuck? <lacht> ich dachte, sie, sie sitzt breitbeinig auf ihm und ihr Rock geht von unten nach oben. Das ist ja seine Hose. Also das hier ist sein Bein und sie hat ihre beiden Beine. Ja, ich. Ja. Das ist irgendwie ziemlich cute. Und erinnert mich an, meine, meine, an, an mich und meine Freunde, wie wir manchmal so da sitzen. Sie ist ja auch ziemlich klein. <lacht> I don't... I, 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 come on, please! I don't know for, so, for how much longer we sat in silence. Oliana stopped crying and I didn't want to disturb her, as she had just calmed down. But I also had absolutely no desire to stay in the forest overnight. Hey, let's go back to the camp. I shook her shoulder gently, but there was no answer. Rihanna had fallen asleep. Again? Hey! I shook her harder. No effect. At that moment I wanted to cry. Why does this always happen to me? Why do I get caught up in these foolish situations, always and everywhere? Even having suddenly appeared in a weirdo pioneer camp in the middle of nowhere, I don't get to become a subject in an experiment, a victim of a sick cosmic mind, or participant in an intergalactic war on the side of a group of suicide prone pacifists, like a regular hero of science fiction. No, instead I have to spend the night in a forest with a little girl in my arms, who is muffled in a bedsheet. <laughs> wo is das... Wo is das bedsheet? Shit! Next time I will rather have the monstrous experiments. I stood up and put the sleeping Oyana on my back. 
Maybe there was a way to wake her up, but firstly I didn't want to, and secondly one more burden or one less. At that point it made no difference. It's good that she's not heavy. At the square I stopped, put Oyana on a bench and threw myself down beside her, totally exhausted. Even a little girl is hard to carry for too long. The stars, the, the stars in the sky were shining brightly. Perhaps they gave they, they, they give the light not only to me and this camp, but also shine in, on the city where I was born and where my old home is. It was as if a pain settled in my chest. Die Lauerhöhle. <laughs> I envisioned my old flat clearly, and a detestable burning started to make its way from my stomach to my throat. It was, it was not wistfulness. More like a sad re reminiscence. Because despite all that's happened, I felt more alive in less than five days here than I had for the last several years there. Now and and now I really wasn't sure if I wanted to, if I want to if I wanted to get back. Only one question still ate at me: how and why I ended up here. It flared up yet again in my mind. I haven't spent much time seeking answers or even just thinking about my situation lately. My thoughts were occupied with everyday routine affairs, and now, in order to break away and be able to wish to stay here for good, I need to understand the nature of this place. It's just that uh, even a, a night, that even a nightingale in a golden cage, has a right to know how and why whose will he got in there. And after that, to make the choice whether to stay or not. I don't know how much longer I would have been devoted to existential thoughts, but Ulyana's loud snoring brought me back to reality. <sighs> so small, but she snores so loudly. I sighed, put Oyano back again and headed to her cabin. <sighs> I had no desire to explain everything to Alyssa, so I just put the sleeping Oyano on the pork, knocked at the door and left quickly. <laughs> I approached Olga's cabin with mixed feelings. On the one hand, I had done what I intended to do, I had comforted and entertained Ulyana. On the other hand, the two crumpled bedsheets in my hands looked more like rags left, left over from some worn out straight jacket. I opened the door and softly... I, 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 I opened the door softly and went in. Semyon! Olga was sitting at the desk and it seemed she had been waiting for me. Do you want to explain something to me? Well, just don't scold her again. It's my fault. Just like that I became a hero, to my own surprise. My tongue acted faster than my thoughts. Perhaps some of my brain traits, which even I wasn't aware of, have shown themselves. Humanity is opposed to common sense. Really? Having started this, I choose to stick to my decision. Well, it was me who got the bed sheets, and I was standing behind a tree back then. Behind what tree? The camp leader looked at me in astonishment. So, what did you need bed sheets for? I realized my mistake. So you're not talking about the forest thing? Samuel, I don't understand you. I wanted to know where you disappeared to, to, to so mysteriously during the hike, but now I won't be interested in listening to your bed sheet story. But it wasn't impossible that she and all the others hadn't seen Oyana's performance. The pioneers laughing out loud couldn't have been only my imagination. Olga, I I'm serious. Didn't you see someone in her bedsheets spring out at you recently? So it was you? She gave me a close look. No, it wasn't me. Couldn't she tell just from the eye? But you're holding the bedsheets. Yes. I couldn't understand if she was playing me for a fool or she really didn't know what this all what this was all about. Olga, let's act like the conversation never happened. I'm too tired for today. Alright, go to bed. To my surprise she readily she readily agreed. Mm. Of course I was astonished by such a reaction, but I decided to use the moment. I wrapped the blanket around myself and turned to face the wall. But I couldn't sleep.
There were no thoughts, my head was aching. But I still couldn't manage to fall asleep. I rolled to the other side and the images of the day started to flash before my eyes. I shut my eyes tight to drive them away, but it didn't, but it didn't work. Suddenly I heard a knocking at the window. Orga seemed to be asleep. I dressed myself and walked outside. Oh, at said. Uliana was standing before me with, with a tricky smile. How did they manage to carry me to the cabin? Wasn't it hard? Yeah, my dick! Not really. What have you come for? I couldn't sleep, but at that moment, bed seemed to be the... Was? But at that moment, bed seemed to be the only place where I could reside with no suffering. <laughs> Which is why Uliana's sudden visit didn't place me at all. How was she? Did you get scolded? No, I avoided it somehow. That's great then. I always get lucky. That's for sure. My eyes began closing despite my will. It seems that slumber has finally come, uh, come upon me. Look, I'm very tired. This won't take long. Close your eyes. It was the easiest thing to do and I didn't even want to know what she needed for. Maybe that way she would leave me alone sooner. Well, it's not one of them, I was so <laughs> huh? I closed my eyes. Das ist doch mal gut gezeichnet, ohne Scheiß. Das ist äh, gut, aber what the fuck ist das an seinem... Wow. Wow, dude. Bildung, huh? And in that moment I felt a brief kiss. My eyes opened by themselves, but Oriana was already running away, waving her hands at me. To 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 me. <laughs> ich, ich winke dir meine Hand zu. I stood still, benumbed, and I couldn't even manage to shout anything after her. I don't know for how long I stood like that, but eventually the night chill cleared my stopper. I shivered and went back to bed. This time I didn't uh, want to sleep, I wanted to think all through, but my eyes which had begun to close as I was standing before Jana seemed to issue a command to the rest of the party and I fell asleep before I realized what happened. Well, the bottom. Day 6 Ulyanas Hut So Ihr merkt es vielleicht schon anhand meiner Stimme Aber ich werde langsam müde Vom ganzen Vorlesen Und ja Das habe ich jetzt Speicher Das war hier Und dann würde ich sagen, war es das wieder für heute und wir sehen uns bei der nächsten Folge. Bis dann. Oder bei der nächsten Aufnahme, ne?